Hello, Assalamu alaikum, wherever you are in the Republic of Ghana and the rest of the world. I love it when I interact with fellow young people, and today we have a very enterprising entrepreneur. He's in the person of Mr. Abdul Kabir Abdul Salam. And today, Abdul Kabir Abdul Salam, who was part of a teaming, you know, an exuberant group of young people while in school, um, used to carry out what they called Dawa Storm. And they would go to the mall, tell people about Islam, and then give out handouts for people to learn more about Islam. He's a burden entrepreneur now, and today we are happy to discuss with him Islam and its challenges in the modern world. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Abdul Kabir, good to see you. Oh, good to see you it's too. It's been a number of years yes, 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 since yes. we've met. Yes, I think five uh, years. Abdul Kabir, no. on the level of uh, Islam, before we even look at the challenges, yes. you were in school, a school dominated, of course, by non-Muslim students, exactly. and you are now in the corporate world, yeah. you meet non-Muslims. What is people's perception about Islam, generally? The people you meet. Okay. Fortunately for me, um, um, I've lived a life that um, wherever I go, people see me. And the least they will do is to try and find out why am I so different from what they think. What they, they, they perceive is that Islam has this violent kind of people and, you know, they, they, they always assume that we don't do the usual. Yes, so for me, whenever I have an interaction with people, um, they, 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 they sometimes, first of all, I'll say, they get confused. They're like, are you really a Muslim? And I'm like, why do you ask? Because I, then they start pushing in the questions. And, um, you know, before you end up the conversation with the person, the person gets to be enlightened. They doesn't get to feel like, oh, so what I was thinking, so there was a different um, perspective to the whole thing. And so, yeah, for me, I feel whenever I encounter people, it's, it ends up being a good feeling mm -hmm. than, the, than the otherwise, yeah. So is it that we are not pushing enough to tell people about this beautiful religion, so they shape their perceptions based upon hearsay? Uh, exactly. To, to some extent, I would say yes, because... Um, um, I mean, sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you, you probably cannot do much, and so you just have to let things be the way they are. But sometimes when you get the opportunity, you need to take advantage of it. I mean, you don't really have to wait for them to ask you, but if you can engage them to, I think it's a, it's a nice way of um, letting them know um, the real thing about Islam. Yeah. Um, away from the negative tag of terrorism, violence, what do you think are some of the challenges Islam faces in our contemporary times? You know, um, I, I, I believe that um, it depends on the side of the world we come from. I, I don't think, yes, though in Ghana, we might see that um, Muslims have some little bit of challenges, but. Um, I think it's, a, it's, it's more of a human nature kind of thing, um, not necessarily Muslims. And so for me personally, I really don't believe that it's a Muslim kind of um, um, situation. And, and so sometimes when I hear it, I just, I just try to wash it away because even the, 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 the fact that you've already accepted that this is the way it is, it's like you already being in it. But when you, when you turn them down and be like, I'm not going to even discuss this because this is not even a topic of, it's not a subject that we need to talk about because it's not true. So I mean, there's nothing to talk about again. Unless, of course, if you want to know. If you want to know, I will tell you. But you don't force people to know things that they are not ready to know. Exactly. So I feel like if you want to tag us bad, that's your own problem. But to us, we are good. And we will always try as much as possible to portray the goodness of Islam. And if you refuse or ignorantly decide not to watch the good side of it, then, I mean, it's, it's your own problem. You are the problem, we are not the problem. Is 
hijab, the debate surrounded hijab in schools and at the workplace, would you count that as one of the challenges we face in the world today? Um, yes, yes, I would say it's, it's a challenge. Um, but I believe that it is up to us Muslims um, to, to let them understand the importance of hijab. I believe if they understand the importance of hijab, um, they would allow us to have that um, and what hijab is the one. importance of the hijab? Just to play the devil's uh, Okay, advocate. okay. <laughs> so um, the importance of hijab is um, the hijab itself, um, I believe it's not just about the veil. The hijab is, is a whole dressing. It's, it's, it's a whole look. And so for a woman, I believe the, the hijab is, is, is more of modesty wow. and not necessarily putting on the veil. And so um, as Muslims too, we shouldn't just put on the hijab as in the veil, but we should portray that modesty. We should show it. And if they see that, they will understand that, oh, yes, now when I see somebody in a hijab, I know that, oh, this person automatically is a good person. It's an upright person. But if I see somebody uh, who is not in hijab, then I could start you know, thinking otherwise for that person. So I think when we are able to um, set that message clear, we would have that um, yeah. free career, space. Muslims are torn between the devil and the deep blue sea. I'm taking you to another challenge in our modern times. Yes, sir. Politics, the way it is conducted in Africa, is dirty. Yeah. Uh, would you encourage Muslims to go into politics? I think I will encourage Muslims to go into politics. Um, first of all, um, I always say, um, um, like for example, this year is an election year. And um, you, you tend to see some people saying, oh, I'm not going to vote. And, and, I, and I always say, you know, everyone has the right to vote. And some people shed blood for this right that you are enjoying now. And, and for us Muslims, it is our responsibility to make sure that we have the right people to govern us. And if you decide not to vote, then definitely you are only saying that you are going to allow that the devil or the bad people to govern us. And that would also go against our religion. And again, if you have Muslims in politics, um, the, 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 the positive side of it is that um, they would also help to shape our policies. So for example, if, if, if there's this um, um, recent policy on education and, and we have Muslims in there and they are very knowledgeable about their deen, they would be able to tell them that, look, we Muslims, this is what we believe in. If you want to do it, this is how you should do it. We believe that if you do it this way, it will help. But if you don't have anybody there, who is going to speak for us? So I thought it is very necessary for Muslims to participate in politics. Okay. In conclusion, Abdul Kabir, how do we go beyond these complaints of, oh, Muslims, they think we are bad, they don't allow us to put on the hijab, we are downtrodden, yeah. we are persecuted. Beyond the challenges, beyond identifying them, what are the solutions you would prefer? Um, uh, first of all, uh, I always say this. We, have, we are fortunate as Muslims. We have the Sharia, which um, we believe, uh, we understand it to be a, a universal constitution that and made up of um, legal rulings and general um, principles that should guide us to being the best of um, humans. But unfortunately, we have some few bad ones amongst us who have changed the narrative. But um, I believe beyond that, one should be able to um, set up personal values and principles. Beyond religion, if you, I think if you have personal values and principles, it will go as much to guide you to practice your religion and to um, meet the standard of, 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 the, of the world. And, and, and by so doing, I think you will so have a very nice place. Does the world have to set the standards by which we live? But we should have we should set good moral standards for the world to want to be like us exactly so um just like i said we have the sharia 
and the Sharia is, is everything for us Muslims. But um, how do we practice this Sharia? I think lately I feel like the most challenge is how we practice the Sharia. But if we could have values and principles guiding us onto how to practice this Sharia, I feel like um, the world will be a better place because that is our standard. That is our standard. But we live in a world that um, day in, day out, policies, new agendas setting, and then life are changing and new things are coming. But you can only do that when you, when you have your standard and then you bring this and then you match it across. And then you see that with your own values and principles, you get to blend into the system so nicely, and people will have no issues with you. Okay. Yeah. Career. Finally, what would you tell the Umma in the world generally uh, before we call it a wrap? Um, I would tell the Umma that um, uh, we should try as much as possible to seek knowledge. It's very, very important because, um, I mean, you can't do anything if you don't know anything. And so um, the basis of everything is knowledge. I mean, if they understood Islam, if they had made time to understand Islam, they would understand us Muslims. If we have also made time to understand them, we have learned about them, we will be able to understand them and we will be able to coexist. But if there is no seeking of knowledge, nobody is ready to learn something new. <laughs> We always find ourselves in the dark. Okay. And so I think we should try our best, our best to seek knowledge. It's okay. very, very important. Thank you yeah. so much, sir, for making time. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you okay. so okay. much. We had in the studio a burden entrepreneur and an enthusiastic person, a passionate one at that, uh, when it comes to Islamic issues, Mr. Abdul Kabir Abdel Salam. Mm -hmm. And he spoke on the topic, uh, challenges faced by Islam in our modern times. So we come your way next time. Stay blessed. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.